So we drew, we drew the points, we got an idea for the graph, I filled in the graph for you, and we have some interesting things on this graph. First of all, the red parts, and if you have a red pen, I'm gonna get you to draw these in. These are called, these dotted red lines are called asymptotes. The vertical one, the one that goes up and down, will always happen when you have non-permissible values. Since x can't be zero, we draw a red dotted line there saying, my graph can never touch that point. It can get close to it, but it can never touch it. If you think about this equation, y equals one over x, you are not allowed to divide by zero. But you can divide by 0 0.0001, that's close to zero. You can live even closer on the edge. You can be like, to my calculator, what's one divided by 0.0000000000? Hesitate to make the calculator nervous for a second, and then put in the one, right? Because if you do one divided by zero, your calculator has that error. You get the angle. You can't hear it, it screams at you at a very high pitch. Yes. You should test it at home. Do one divide by a zero on your calculator and see if your dog starts playing. Okay? We also have a horizontal asymptote in this graph. And the horizontal asymptote is there to tell you what's happening at extreme big values of x, either huge negative numbers or huge positive numbers. And in this situation, if you put a huge positive number in for x, like, what's big? What's big number here? 100? Sure. If you put in 100, then the y would be 1 over 100, okay? Which is pretty close to 0 already. If you put a bigger number in, it gets even closer to 0. And as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, it gets closer and closer to zero. Like on the graph, I guess it feels close to zero already at one half. Then one fifth and one tenth. I can't even imagine trying to put a dot at one one thousandth on my graph. It'd be pretty close to zero. So we have a horizontal asymptote when the graph gets close to zero when x gets really, really big. And these are reciprocals. So we can highlight a few things on our notes here. We've got our function here. So these are called, if you don't mind having these, we can highlight. Reciprocal function. Okay? So some things. We talked about the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. And does it make sense that it has no x-intercept? Because if you do a reciprocal, can you tell me a fraction? one over something that's equal to zero. It's impossible. No matter what number I put on the bottom, I can get close to zero. This calculator is making a mistake there. You can put a huge number in and do one over a million, and your calculator will give up and say, so close to zero, it's zero. But it's not actually zero, right? I would love one, one millionth of Who's that guy that hit Amazon? A big fortune. I would still have a fair bit of money if I could get one one millionth of his fortune. I took one one millionth of Hunter's fortune. That would be maybe <laughs> negative two. <laughs> okay. And then we also have vertical asymptote. A vertical line that the graph approaches. And we would say it is undefined or has a non-permissible value at x equals 1.
So reciprocal graphs, okay, reciprocal graphs have no x-intercepts because the only way a fraction is ever equal to zero is if your numerator is equal to zero. And these ones always have a one over, okay? Some of the things that we're going to notice is if we compare the green graph, which is x minus 1, to its reciprocal graph, where you have an x-intercept, that's going to become the non-permissible value for your vertical integral. Because if you have an x-intercept on the original, it's going to equal 0. And if you do 1 over the original, then you have 1 over 0, which is not a lot. For the reciprocal graphs that we are going to do, your life is going to be easy. In grade 11, the reciprocal graphs that we do always have a horizontal asymptote at 0. Later on, you're going to do some reciprocal graphs that don't have that. But the ones in grade 11 do. And the reason they do is because we're going to do both reciprocals of lines and parabolas. And any time your line either goes up forever or down forever, and it does both, the values are getting extremely big. And if you do one over an extremely big number, you're going to get extremely small and get closer and closer to zero. So all of ours, whether you do a line or a parabola, has arrowheads on the end saying it's either going to get extremely big or extremely big negative numbers. So we'll always have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Then anytime, if you can graph your original one, check this out. On x minus one, do you see that I have the point here, four comma three? That means, what would I get when I plug into the red graph? Right? All that's changed is you put the x minus one on the bottom. So if you have the point four comma three, now your y value is 4 comma 1 over 3. So let's look at example 1. Determine the equation of the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote will always happen at the non-permissible value. So what is, what can x not equal in this case? Okay. And we see that 3 over 4 would make it equal to zero. I mean, you can even write out the equation. You say, if 4x minus 3 is equal to zero, that's bad. How do I solve for x? I move my 3 over and divide. So I could solve the equation, but you're probably pretty good from your factoring and solving things that you could see that x can't equal negative 3 over 4. That's your non-permissible value. This question, this is important because you're going to lose half marks for this says determine the equation of the vertical asymptote. Well, I'm going to write this in red because we will draw it as an asymptote. The vertical the equation of the vertical asymptote is x equals 3 over 4. For the non-permissible value, we put the line through to say it can't equal. But when it's asking for the equation of the vertical line, we have to just have an equal sign. X equals 3 over 4. So it's easy to, right? so many times right, people write vertical asymptotes with the line through because they're thinking non-permissible value. But when it's asking for an equation of a vertical asymptote, you want to have the equal sign. Just for fun, because this is why. <coughs> because we're going to have to do this anyways after. And I saw some people were really excited about graphing. We'll draw the graph quickly. So what I would do to draw this graph, the first thing I would do is draw my asymptote. 
And we would have an asymptote right here at three quarters. That's my vertical one. I would label that x equals three quarters. And as I said, all of the ones that we're going to do are going to have one at y equals zero. If we want to figure out some points, for example, you could plug in 2 for x. Can you see that if you plug in 2, you would get 8 minus 3, you would get 1 fifth. That would be the point, 2 comma 1 fifth. And once I have this point in this section with the dotted lines, I just have to draw my graph towards those dotted lines. Same thing, if you plug in a really good point to plug in, would be zero, because it's easy to do the mental math. I get zero comma one over negative three. And now I have enough here to go towards the asymptote. And this would be the final graph. Questions for practice on this one? are four and five.